Okay. Welcome, welcome everybody. Glad you could all make it today. Um, so some of you have a second floor, some of you don't, uh, but you all have the need for a roof. So what I have is um, all the same footprint um, for the house. The walls are all the same on each of these. And yet they all have a different roof system to them. So what you see on the screen is all the different ways you can cap off the top of your house, which is kind of nice. Um, yep, I remember Griffin, you're good. Um, so what I'm looking at here is let's start with the two most common types of roof. And I'm just gonna go through the definitions of these for right now and I'll show you how to do them. What I did is I took the house that I've been demoing for the class and did some bad things to it so I can accommodate a lot of different roof structures on the same house. So I would draw 18 different houses to try and meet all of your variations. Um, just so you know, next semester, everybody's doing the same house because this is getting really hard. Um, it's not usually I'd like everybody to have a different house, um, but that's a uh, usual years everybody's in class and so I can work and keep them all on track. Um, so that makes it a little easier. So let's go ahead and start with this guy right here. This is a gable roof. It says cross gable just because we have two gables coming together. Um, but a gable is this front leading edge right here. Now, this is the overhang of the roof. And so what we do, and I'm going to try and draw on a drawing. Don't know why we try these things, but we're going to try it anyway. Um, this has what are called outlookers, and outlookers are two by four, maybe two by six framers that come along, and the truss sits right here, and that sits on the wall. But these are nailed to the truss, and they stick out so you can have that overhang. And so this end of the roof is also called a rake. It's called a rake because the outlookers, and that's what these members are right here. Those are outlookers. Um, they make us the shape of a rake. So you have this overhang on the ends. Um, the overhang is also called an eave. So the eave is the underside of the overhang, and that happens on all sides of the house. Um, I would say four sides, but some houses have more than four sides. But when we look at the terminology for the gable, the gable comes up and then goes down. Okay, That's the thing you're looking for. Um, and it's very open. These are the cheapest roofs to build, or the least expensive. Um, there's a couple things to be aware of them. You never want them to change color so it makes a little more impact. I don't know why I try to be fancy, but we're going to. You never want the wind to blow against the house that direction. Now, can you control the wind? No, but there is a prevailing wind that we can be aware of. So in the Along the Wasatch Front, that prevailing wind is typically east to west because we have the canyons. So in the morning, we get a wind that comes out of the canyons. And in the, sorry, no, other way around. The wind goes from the canyons to the mountains. And then in the afternoon, that switches around because the air heats up in the mountains and comes back down. That is our prevailing winds here. And they can be as strong as 105 miles an hour. So that big Cottonwood Canyon, low Cottonwood especially. Up in Ogden, um, Morgan Canyon is a constant 90 to 95. Every morning, that's what it is. Uh, that canyon is kind of wide. It's a pretty big transition point. Um, these prevailing winds are important to our design to understand what is going on there. Now, when a storm comes in, however, the winds change north and south. Because we have mountains on the east and west of the valley, it channels those storm winds a different direction. So when we look at our roof line, we are kind of in a weird situation here. Um, we have, that means what we have is we have a category one tornado every day here. We don't even think about it. But a 90 mile an hour wind is a category one tornado. That's our every day. And we think nothing of it. So when we get a tornado, it's like, Okay, that's a little different, but big deal. And, and that's kind of how we treated the one we had. 
Now, the re thing you want to worry about with the gable roof is because this is an overhang here is open, the wind can come and do an uplift and rip this off. Okay. It doesn't happen very often. We do things to counteract that. We use anchor ties to strap the roof down to the wall. We tie the wall to the foundation and we bolt it down really tight. But occasionally we might see some roof damage. And we saw that uh, about a month ago. We've had everything this year. Not everything. Okay, so it's kind of be aware of that. Um, other than that, it's a great roof. It's a really good roof. Um, as long as you've got this side of the roof here, um, going into where the wind comes over, uh, you're in pretty good shape. These roofs last a long time. They're sturdy, they're stable, um, and they do their job. So this is a gable roof. Um, the cross is a de de descriptor that we have two coming together. A couple other things to be aware of is in terminology. This part of the roof right here that goes across the top, every roof has one. It's called a ridge, the ridge of the roof. So just like the peak of the mountain, it's the peak of the roof. It's where it all comes together. This member back here is a hip, whereas this on the inside, so concave, convex, 90 degree corners, typically. This side here is a valley. Okay, so valleys, hips, and gables. Those are pretty common elements of a roof that we need to be aware of uh, on there. This open wood frame right here across the side and then along here, that's called a fascia. That's F-A-S-C-I-A or F-A-C-S-I-A. Depends on what part of the country you're from. So it's just one of those weird things we have to deal with. Um, the fascia derives from the Greek frieze. So on a Greek temple where the statues are above the wall, they, uh, they call it a frieze because they've frozen their history in stone. And you can, that's where most of our myths come from, from Greek myth. The reason we found them is because they're written in stone on the buildings. Okay? And that would mean that this fascia could be as much as six feet tall, and then it becomes a frieze with their statues and stuff. And you'll get more of that in architectural here history. Okay, so gables, pretty common roof. The next type is the hip. Hips a lot like a gable, except now we have a sloped sloped surface on every side of the roof. These are really good in high wind conditions. You see a lot of hip roofs in Utah, um, a lot. And, and that's primarily because of our wind situation we have here. It keeps our roofs a little more tied down. Doesn't mean you have to use a hip. Okay, you can engineer a gable roof to do just fine in the wind. You just have to be aware of what that wind is and what it's doing. So we just have to slope this side as well. You do not get a rake on these. There's no rakes. You just have the overhang and the soffit. Um, that's the main difference. So this is a hip. You got a hip on the side, valley, hips on the end. Hips on the end. So we've got five hips instead of one. That is what you look at. It's kind of a weird animal, but we'll go with that. Okay. Then we get to where we combine. Now, with all the roofs we're going to talk about today, you can combine, mix and match, do what you will with it. Okay. There's no rule that says you can't mix these roofs up. Uh, what you want to do is have a reason for mixing them up. So we have a gable and a hip. This might be a situation where the wind is coming along this direction. So we put a hip on there to maybe counteract that a little bit. Um, why do, just that while we're talking about roof systems, why do tornadoes seek out trailer parks? Do they actually seek them out or what's the deal with trailer parks and tornadoes? Okay, let's think about what a trailer is. A trailer is not tied down to foundation. They typically have a rectangular shape. If they have an overhang, it's a pretty substantially smaller one on there. And so by the shape of what they are, they tumble very well. Um, I mean, they're just not tied down. And so it's not that a tornado looks for trailer parks to eat up the trailers. It's just they're really susceptible to high wind. And for you here in Utah, 
if we look at the news on any given windy day, they'll talk about semis that have tipped over, typically out along the Tooele Highway, where the winds are coming off the salt flats, and they've tipped over. Well, the same thing's happening to a trailer park. Uh, if we get high winds, they're going to tip over. And that's what happens. And the tornado does not have to go through a trailer park to cause damage to it. It can be a half mile away and still blow those little suckers over. So um, that's the downside to trailers. Um, if we anchor them down, they're just as good as anything else. Can you put a trailer on a foundation? Yes. You take off the bottom axles and the wheels and you put it on a foundation. It's, it's just a house on a wheel. Take the wheels off, you've got a house. Um, it, they, you can actually have them built here in Utah. There's a company down in Spanish Fork that builds what they call modular housing. Modular housing is basically another fancy term for trailer housing. Um, but this type is put on a foundation. The code is substantially different for that type of housing. It is much more um, allowable to do certain things. It's, in, in other words, it's not as restrictive as the International Residential Building Code. It is done by the HUD Building Code. That's a, um, ho Housing and Urban Development, which is a government-only code. It's only for the United States. We can build with different materials, often lighter materials. Um, and so it's a, it's a choice for a lot of people who are trying to get into a home that can't afford maybe what's going on in, in industry right now. And housing is very, very expensive. We've talked about that a lot, how expensive it is. Okay, let's go back over here to the clipped hip. Okay, so here we've just, we've got a gable and we put a hip on the top third of it. Okay, it gives a different look to it. Kind of a fun little um, element. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is, and I didn't do this yesterday, I should have. Um, I wanna show you the footprint of these. So I'm just gonna go and look at the footprint. This is literally just a box, just an outline of the house. It has an overhang, and these little triangle symbols represent that there's a slope. Really simple drawing. I mean, there's nothing really to it, right? If we look at the clip, however, let's see if there's any difference. Oh, well, it looks exactly the same. Oh. Well, how do we get the clip on there? Okay, let's take a look at what we can do with our settings. Um, so not a whole lot going on there. The clip here is, is done by stretching this corner here, these little down arrows and adjusting this. So it's a little bit tricky, but we'll look into it if that's what you want. Um, we'll help you, uh, I will help you, I guess we, the powers that be, the great cosmos, the whatever is out there anymore, the viruses um, will all help you. Um, we'll get you that clip, okay? Now, this is just a nice decorative uh, feature. It is a little more expensive because everything from the tip of this triangle right here forward to the outside has to be done with um, dimensional lumber. They have to manually frame every part of it. It's not done with a wood truss. They have to be framed to do, to do that. So it's a little bit more labor, but that's okay. We can, if we want to look, that's what we want to get. This is a little bit more uh, difficult to explain what's going on here. This is called a salt box. It comes from colonial days. Um, this would have been a derivation off of a shed roof. So typically what happens on these or historically happened is the left side of the house would have been built. And then they did an addition to this back side here, this lower level. And that addition was almost always incorporating the kitchen as part of the house. So in the 16, 1700s, our kitchens were outside. We cooked over an open fire, we made the food, we might have brought it in to eat, you know, pilgrims, that kind of thing. Okay? Well, once we figured out how to make a fireplace inside without burning the house down, then we move the kitchens inside. And what they would do is they just lengthen this, this roof down to it. So let's take a gander at what's going on here. So this roof line here covers the half of the house, which is right here. That's the second floor. This comes from that second floor height all the way down to the first floor height. And that's what creates it. Now, this ridge 
may or may not be centered. The ridge does not ever have to be exactly centered on your house. It makes it easier to build and easier to draw if it is, but if you're looking for a specific style, the first thing you should look at changing is where the ridge of the house is. And if you shift that, that does affect um, how the roof looks and what's, what's going on there, okay? So that's the salt box, good old salt box. Um, you don't see too many of these in Utah. Um, one, people like their space. And if you can build half a second floor, you might as well build a whole floor. So, okay. This is one of my favorites, um, <clears throat> even though I've never done a house with one. Um, very expensive roof to build. Uh, this is a Dutch hip. <clears throat> the Dutch hip has a couple of elements to it. One, it has the shed roof down here. Um, the shed roof, all the shed, a shed roof means is it's a single sloping side of a roof. So if I looked at the gable, like this gable here, if I'm just looking at um, this portion of the roof, and that's the only part that's on the house, that'd be a shed. So it's a single panel of the roof that is what we're looking at. And so over here, that's what I have in this area, the shed. So it's a typical gable, and we skirt it with a shed on the end there. Now there's a history to these. Um, these are Scandinavian, which means Holland, Dutchland, um, those north, northern Scandinavian countries. Um, they get a lot of snow there, at least they used to before the climate in the world changed. And just to put you in scientific base, our climate changes constantly. This is not the first time the world has warmed up. It is not always directly related to industrial pollution. Volcanoes do it too. They cause heating up. Excess plant life will cause it to heat up. When you have more plants, they put off more O2. The more O2 you put off, the more plants you get, and they kind of start to create this imbalance. And so more plants need more animals, more animals need more CO2. Uh, right now, the big political push is to do away with all meat livestock. So cows, sheep, okay. That's not gonna fix the problem. Enjoy your meat. Um, getting rid of all the cows in the United States will not undo global warming, okay. Um, what does undo global warming is an ice age. It captures the CO2, puts it into ice and holds it. We have an ice age in this, on this planet on average every 10 to 15,000 years. We are 2,000 years due. We're late. Uh, you know, we don't want to be late. So we are due for an ice age. Ice ages are always preceded by global warming. Always. So before you get all panicky, we're fine. We have the ability to control the temperature of our homes. We're not going to go like the Neanderthal and freeze out and have to eat woolly mammoths. Um, but um, just be aware that there are cycles that are planet falls. And that just because science is all an uproar, you need to get the full science, okay? Because it affects architecture, it affects it quite a bit. But anyway, these homes were built up in uh, Northern Holland. Um, it gets very dark there, six months of the year, there's no sun. And when there's no sun, there's nothing to melt the snow. So the snow just keeps building. So it's not uncommon then for these homes when they're being used, is that the snow would fill up everything to the first floor. So when these first were developed, they would bring their livestock into the home on the lower level and the family would move to the upper level. So when they had to clean out in the spring, it was a major clean out, okay? Uh, because that way they could keep their animals warm and fed all in one roof. The animal body heat would keep the family warm. It was a win-win, except you had to deal with some smell, okay? Then they moved animals out to barns, which is always a good thing, but they still had the snow problem. So what would happen is this portion of the roof would have a door so you could exit out and use your snowshoes and skis to get over to the barn to take care of your livestock. Um, so it's a very, very functional design, uh, but it's very expensive, very expensive design. Looks good, um, but they are very, very pricey because you're building a roof, the shed roof on top of a gable roof is what you're doing, okay? Kind of fun. His, architecture history is kind of fun. If you get a chance, um, History Channel has lots of these kind of stories, and they're just kind of fun to see how it evolved. We're now finding out that Easter Island 
there are feet under those giant heads. They're, they're still people. They just buried them and left their heads above the ground. So we don't know why, but they did. So crazy, crazy stuff, new things. All right, next roof that we're gonna look at. This one is more of a commercial roof. So this is a tapered roof, um, usually an insulation. So this is um, what you'll see if you drive along the freeway and you look out over all the industrial areas of Salt Lake, in any city for that matter, you'll see a lot of flat roofs. Those roofs are not flat. They have a slope to them. It's usually only an eighth of an inch per foot, so it's very gentle. That's made up by laying rigid insulation down on the roof and then shaping that uh, so it slopes. And that slopes typically to a drain somewhere in the middle of the roof, often more than one drain. We don't ever do one drain anymore. We used to. We used to put one drain in the bottom of the swimming pool and that was great. We used to put one drain on the roof, that was great. Then we learned the hard way that people like to sit on swimming pool drains to stand the water longer. And this would be a little gross and morbid, but this is why there's an overflow on your tub and why you can't sit on the drain of your tub, it's underneath the faucet for a reason. When you sit on a drain of something like a pool, it can create a vacuum. That vacuum can pull a person inside out. Once your intestines are exposed to air, they die. That's not a good way to go. Okay, so by putting a second drain in, you cannot create the vacuum. We do the same thing on the roof of a building because birds, like to put their nests on roof drains. And then we had single drains, it would create a vacuum and stuck the bird nest down into it. And then we've got backed up roof drains and this parapet wall, a parapet wall is just an extension of the exterior wall that goes straight up. That would create a swimming pool up there and we'd have thousands of gallons of water because of rain and then the roof would, would collapse. Now we don't have that anymore but that is the issue. The other thing we still have to worry about though, is you never want water to stay on a roof. So what's the chemical composition of water? H2O, what's the composition of hydrochloric acid? H1O1. So when this water sits on the roof and ultraviolet light hits it, it gives off those electrons and goes from water to hydrochloric acid. That eats through the roofing material. Um, we don't want that, okay? So we want to keep water off our roofs and uh, maintain them. So standing water, while we think mainly about mosquitoes, if it's left stagnant long enough, it does turn acidic, and we want to avoid that, okay? So this is more of a commercial application um, for flat roofs. Why do we want a flat roof anyway? What, why are we doing that? What goes up on these roofs? Think about driving on the freeway, you look over, you see a commercial building, it's got a flat roof, what's on that roof? Satellites could be a satellite dish, absolutely. What else could be up there? You see big square boxes? Those big square boxes are either their condensing system for their cooling, for HVAC, they might be um, water, tanks for increased water pressure. So if you need manufacturing and you need more water pressure than what the city allows, you put a water tank on the roof so you get gravity to help increase that pressure. New York does this primarily. One, they're at sea level, so it's hard to get gravity forced water without putting on the roof. Um, and so most of our equipment is on the roof and we need a flat surface for that to be. That's why the slopes are so gentle. Um, makes it easier to keep them out of the way of the valuable square footage that we can rent in space, inside. So kind of next time you look, look at how much equipment is on a roof uh, for a commercial building, because a lot of you will be doing a commercial class um, next semester, hopefully, cross my fingers. Uh, would love to have you all there. And um, as I go into some deeper stuff, but this is uh, typically what to do, the parapet wall and with a tapered uh, insulated roof system. Going back this way. This one is one of my favorites. The flat and the parapet are optional. You could have another gable up on top of this and close it off. Uh, but we're mainly looking at the mansard. Okay, now mansard is a French style roof. It's usually found in the French villas. 
And there's a story that goes with these. This is the type of building that Cinderella would have been in. She would not have been in a castle. There wouldn't have been a tower um, because that's more for lords and royalty. But the story of Cinderella talks about this servant girl who was sent up to the upper chamber. And so what would happen is you might have one or two floors underneath the roof, and then the roof creates another floor. And then we have a pitched roof on top of that, typically. That in, in England, servants were always in the basement. And we carried that tradition with us in the United States. Um, but in France, servants went upstairs to the attic. One, it was hotter up there because they're closer to the equator, French Mediterranean type thing. And so Cinderella would have gone up into the attic space, and that's where um, all the sewing would have taken place for the household. That's where most of the mending and repair would have been done on equipment. So in the story, she's up there, and her mice in Disney's version make her this amazing dress. Okay? So here's the reality of what's going on there. The French like to hold balls. They like their dancing. And a French ball would last between three and seven days. Now, if you are hosting a ball, that means you had to provide sleeping chambers and food for your guests for the length of the ball. That was expected. Um, you probably wouldn't see people bring a lot of luggage with them. They usually wore the same clothes all week, which is why they invented perfume. Thank you, French people. Um, what would happen is the lay of the house would go upstairs, usually to the mansard floor, and this would be surrounded with windows, and she would watch every guest arrive. And she's not caring what the guy is wearing, but she's looking at what the ladies are wearing, what color, what style, and her team of seamstresses would be making clothes while the ball was going on from the start of the ball until the ladies had the dress she wanted or until the last guest arrived. So she had to have a dress that was unique, better, and more stylish than anybody else that she had invited. That was the rule. And so we get the term fashionably late from this. The lay of the house is always the last to arrive in the most elegant dress possible. And that's where part of that story of Cinderella comes from is coming with the best dress at the very last minute possible for the ball before it ends. And so she would arrive at the end and show off her finery and how wealthy she was, even if it may have cost them a 10 years salary to do that. When a family hosted a ball, it was a very big event. And it was kind of, a, a, kind of like showing off your car today, what, how nice your life is. So that's kind of what Mansard is, is in this French area. Um, the Sturgeon and Rail is not meant for royalty. This is a a villa, villa, so these are kind of upper crust people, but not, not in the royal families. So there's a little deviation on the stories, but that's basically what's going on. All right, this guy, this is on your state test. So the ones that you're gonna see on your state test are the mansard, the gable, the hip, and the gambrel. Those roofs are on your state test. They're on there every single time. They might throw in a Dutch hip, uh, depending if you get lucky to get that question. This one's kind of a hit and miss on this one, but those other four are always there. The gambrel is more of an, uh, not an Amish, but a, what's the dang old bill? Oh my gosh, I can't remember the dang group. Quakers, sorry, Quaker Oats. Had to think of the dang mush. Okay, Quakers are pretty much credited for this style of design. It was borrowed by the Amish and the Mennonites, which are groups of communities of people based on their faith. Um, and what this is, is a multi-pitched uh, roof. So we have a lower pitch and an upper pitch. They're different. These roofs are a little more complex to draw in that you have to create um, a profile and then extrude it. Kind of like working in uh, SolidWorks or another 3D modeling software. They're a little more complex to build. Um, and they're not, they're, they're nice because it gives you a very large attic space to put bedrooms in and so forth uh, as you work those. Uh, but they are what they're hard to say. So it's gambrel. Uh, don't get that too confused with the gable. So one's a they both start with G and 
and that's what causes you to lose points in the test. So Gambrel, G-A-M-B, and then Gable, G-A-B. So be careful with that when we do the state test, okay? All right, and the next one is kind of a mix of all. It is um, a hip with the more important part, the dormer. So we have a dormer that goes out flush with the exterior or a dormer that's insert. And a dormer allows you to put um, additional head space in a sloping roof so you can stand up. So if you get your roof slope down there, you might only have four or five feet of headroom, and that means you got to duck over, but you put a dormer and you can stand up and look out the window and have a little bit more going on. So dormers are kind of fun. They're just a little pop-out windows. They can have what's called an eyebrow, which instead of being a peaked roof is a rounded roof. It has a little rounded slope to it, like your eyebrow. Um, again, you have to do those with the profile, a little more tricky to build, but uh, all the same kind of fun to put in there if you want dormers. You see dormers made on ranch style homes in the United States, uh, where we have a really steep roof. And so I put these dormers to put some more light into that space and get a feel for it. So this file is called um, the, the, the roof types. It is in the Canvas course. You're more than welcome to download it. It is done on version 14. So you will have to update it to whatever version you're using, but then you can use it to look at how these are all done. There's no materials on this file. They are simply all gray, nice chunks of just mass, okay? All right, so that's our types. Remember, we have gable, hip, mansard, gambrel. Those are the ones that you can definitely be on the test. You might see a Dutch ship show up in there, and you might even see a salt box. These, these two get thrown in as kind of testers to see if you're paying attention to what you're picking. In all cases, you're matching the name to the profile. So just remember on the salt box, you have a very long sloping roof line on one side only. The Dutch ship, you've got a, a winged out kind of gable here. And you should be okay with those. We'll do a review uh, before we take that. So you all do really well. Um, we're planning on taking it here. I'm gonna try and hold it over a five day period. And so here's my plan so that you can kind of know. I have no idea what's gonna happen. I was gonna do the test in, Jan in December. I'm gonna hold off till January and do it just before the end of semester. If you get on dismissal, and you have not been in contact with someone with COVID or you have not contracted COVID, then I'm going to have you come in uh, for a one hour period and just take the test and then leave uh, so we can keep distancing going. I might bring four in at the most of the time and we'll schedule that with you. Uh, so just come in and take the test and go. So because you have to, that is, we didn't do those last year. And in order for you guys to move on and have any kind of credentials for college stuff. We need to make sure you get some kind of standard exam on your records. Okay. Um, do I need the horn? I think I need a horn. Hang on. I won't do the horn, but good night. It's 12 o'clock in the morning. Good morning, sunshine. You know what? Nighttime is when the sun goes down. That's when we sleep. Thanks. Let us keep that handy. In the old days, I walk around the ruler and just whack the table, but I kind of zoomed here. All right, so sorry for you guys who all have your headphones on and just went deaf. I apologize for that. All right, let's take a look at um, the house that shouldn't be, okay? So this is our, our house, and I'm gonna kind of explain what I've done here. Because what I want to do is show you there's things that might happen on your home. For those who have just a single floor, your life is going to be really, really easy. For some of you who have been working on version 2021 and are working at home, you have an RFI file that will not let you do the automatic wall select because your walls are not really walls anymore. They're just masses. You then have to trace your roof line off. Okay. Um, and, and keep working on it, but what we'll do is we'll merge the two files together, your old 
before you left with the new stuff you've done while you've been gone. It's going to take a little bit of work. Um, it's actually going to take me a lot of work. So please be patient with me while I get everybody put back together when you get back. We are straggling, straggling things out now four weeks from when the first ones left to when the next ones come back. I've got to put you all back on the same page at some point. So please be patient with me while we do that. Um, it is not possible to save Revit backwards. So we have to, what we have to do is create it as a broken down ASCII or, or dot matrix type code. So you have something to work on. Um, it's just the nature of what we're dealing with and it, it makes us stronger, but yay. Okay, so what I've done here, this area we're gonna talk about last because this has lots and lots of problems design-wise, primarily with the roof. It looks great for a wall. I've got windows, yay, but there are big problems with the, with the way it's laid out for putting a roof over the garage, okay? Um, if I'm gonna go to top view real quick, get you an idea as weak as that. The wall does not go to the back of the house, it comes forward, which means I've got a lower roof and an upper roof. Um, I've also clipped the side here, uh, even though the porch does go on. So I've got a different roof system here. And then I carried it forward to the front of the porch. So the house sits on the columns that are supporting my roof system. So I think in doing this, I'm hoping I have addressed just about every house configuration you guys might have. And saying that there'll be three of you have done something completely different that I didn't anticipate, but that's okay. Um, you can put a roof on anything. You really, really can. And what I'm going to start with is uh, this back portion of the roof over here. So I'm going to go into my first floor plan <clears throat> where I can see um, where my walls are. You have to think about where you're putting your roof. So you do have a roof layer but if that's above the second floor walls. So if you have a roof that goes down low, that covers just the first floor, you can't put it on the roof. It's gonna be up there 20 feet in the air and not do you any good, okay? So if you want to work on your house as we go about doing this, um, making the roof is not complicated. There are a few things to remember and we'll talk about those just a minute. Uh, what I've done is I use this wall for my bearing above. So I had a point of reference. Uh, which means I'm back down at this wall here that I have to bring a roof to uh, instead of the bearing wall that should be for this house, which is this wall. Okay, so I, I've kind of, the guy I used to work with, it's, it's um, and I'm not going to use the chair. I, I really messed my house up is what I've done. And so uh, it will not look like this next week. <laughs> It'll go back to its normal, nice, good design. But for what we're doing right now, it's going to work. <clears throat> So you get to the roof by going into your architecture tab and we find our roof. It's right before the ceiling, which doesn't make a lot of sense. You think you want the ceiling first, but that's how we do it. Okay. So I'm going to click on the roof and let me talk about a few things in this little ribbon here <clears throat> that we need to have happen here. And I'm sure drink more water at lunch. I apologize. The first option here is to find slope. I would recommend when you start your roof, you always have that checked. That will put a sloping roof on every side that you've selected. Okay, it'll be more than you need if you're doing a gable, but it will give you the option to make modifications and change it a little easier so you're not trying to figure out what one you want to change. So I usually just turn that on. Then you have an overhang, and this is how far the wall is from the edge of the roof. So how far your roof extends out. You can extend just about anything you want. However, in Utah, that's not a good idea. Uh, in Utah, we get a lot of snow. And it, uh, the part of the roof that extends out from the wall is not heated. So here's where we run into problems. If you go too far out, you end up getting what's called an ice dam forming, where the snow sits on the end of the roof, it melts a little bit from the sun, freezes, thaws, freezes, thaws, and it builds this big chunk of ice on the end of the roof. The ice weighs more than snow. And so you can really overload your roof and actually have it pop at the ridge, which then opens your whole house up to lots of problems. We can avoid that by putting on heat tape and running electrical current through the possible snow. But then you have to make sure you replace that every three to five years 
because it wears out. And you have to make sure you turn it off in the summer because then you've added too much heat to your house. So there's little things with that. The other thing is, is it's too far out there. Um, you've added more stress to your building because it's just like a teeter-totter. The longer the lever, the greater pressure puts, and we want to kind of avoid that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this um, roof in. Um, your minimum overhang is six inches. Now, unless you're doing a commercial building, then you can put a parapet and have zero overhang. But on a house, you need at least six inches of overhang. The overhang allows for water to drip down and not along your wall. If you have a brick building, water that drips along the brick will discolor the brick and leave a white, chalky, what's called cre creosote, which means the calcium in the brick is being leached out to the surface. It's really ugly and hard to clean off. It's basically up to, you've got hard water built up on your brick. Um, on, on siding, you can get water staining, and on stucco, you can get water staining. So we really don't want water dripping down your, your house wall. Um, I typically go about 18 inches or one foot, one foot, one foot six is my typical go-to overhang. A lot of times they'll just do a foot. Um, I like a little bit deeper overhang. So I would recommend no more than two feet. Two feet will mean you don't have to do any extra engineering on it, which keeps your house a little cheaper to build. Once you go over two feet, your engineer has to engineer for that overhang because now you've got more wind uplift, you've got more snow weight on there. And when you put snow, which is a live load and turns to ice and becomes a dead load, that changes your equations quite a bit, okay? Um, so 18 inches is typically a pretty good size. The overhang also shades your house. It provides a way to keep the sun from adding extra heat to interior spaces. So if you're doing solar design on a house, you put in things like trellises, and certain types of overhangs that would help shade the windows to keep sunlight from going in directly into the house. All right, so I've got my setup. Um, I'm not gonna do the extent of the wall core right now. Um, what that does, it just makes sure the roof attaches to the stud. I'll just do it, we'll just do it, it's not a big deal. Uh, I'll just go ahead and extend it, just make sure it's attached. Now, because I have exterior walls that I can see, I can start with those using my wall tool. Okay, now this will not work for those of you who are using the RFI file that's converted over um, so you can actually work at home because you're on the home laptops have 2020 instead of 2021, um, kind of a drawback there. But I'll, I'll give you fixes for that in just a second. So I do the wall. I'm just gonna pick the exterior walls I can. Now if I'm on the inside, my overhangs is show on the inside of the house. You can make a roof smaller than the house. It's just gonna fall in, that's no good. So we want to be on the outside edge of the wall so it sticks out there and just kind of comes along there. And now this is what those of you who have the RFI files will do. You're just going to do a, a wall, a line, and you're going to trace um, the wall. And I usually go oh, just right about the center of the wall if I can. I'm just going to make a line straight across here that represents where the wall would be in this case. And so if you're in an RFI file, you would use this line. You can set a line up, and I'll just put two in for right now. You can draw the roof with lines only, trace the perimeter house, and when you draw, where you're drawing, there'll be an offset for where the roof line is. Hopefully you can see that, that my draw line is two feet below where the pink line is. So you can just trace the whole thing off with the line. Five versions ago, that's what we had to do, the wall, the automatic wall tool did not work on roofs. So you just trace the perimeter and it was all good. No big deal. All, everything's great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use my corner tool and I'm gonna connect these. So they just form off this part of the roof. And I'm, I'm sorry this will take a while, but there's a lot that goes on here. I've got two different wood roof systems actually going here, which is kind of crazy. Um, this wall right, this line right here is against the wall. I do not want a slope there. And I'm gonna leave the slope for right now so you can see it. I didn't leave it yesterday for that class and they were a little not sure what I did. So for all intents and purposes, this, this roof's done. I'm gonna hit the green check mark and call it done. And it said, you wanna attach? Yeah, might as well just attach it. 
in your plan view, it's going to chop off the top of your roof. Remember in plan view, the view only goes up four feet from the floor. So it's going to cut off everything that's above that. So it's going to look kind of like a mansard roof. Okay. But when I go into 3D on this, whoops, wrong 3D. Let's get rid of that 3D. Okay, here's my roof. Let me spin that around so you can see what I've done. Oh, look, I put it down on the floor. How nice of me. Okay, this usually happens to about every one of you at least once on your house. When I select this roof here, and it's all hipped, I put it on the first floor. Okay, well, that's where it went. It's on the floor and uh, makes it kind of hard to get in the rooms that way. So I'm just going to change that now to the second floor and raise that up. Really just a quick jump up there. It's actually a little taller than it needs to be, um, but that's okay for right now. Um, so if I look, my walls are here and this is up here. So what you could do is we could put in a top of a top plate line for each wall but i found that that's a little bit more work than necessary um, but i want to look at some edits on this and be a little more succinct okay here's the problem that i'm having here here's my slope at the back it slopes down into this wall what happens in utah when we do that snow gets there and it just sits there. And that snow is going to keep expanding because it's freezing. And it's going to push this roof away from this wall and open that up. And then it's going to leak. So that pressure of ice forming is huge. You can, you can, I mean, old castles were made by taking a crack and filling with water and freezing it until the rocks fell off. That's how the old British castles were built. They didn't have stone and, and steel to work with, they just let water break those rocks. And it's pretty powerful stuff. We don't want that in our house. So I'm gonna start my edits here, okay? So I'm gonna select that roof. I'm gonna go first look at my edit type and see what's going on in here. And kind of get in the habit of doing this a little bit um, because there's quite a few things you can change and adjust on your roof. So I look at the structure and the structure has this as a one foot thick roof line. That's huge, huge, okay? Typically, um, if they're gonna be made out of trusses and you might have a roof that's eight inches uh, instead of 12. Um, so I'm just gonna chop this down to eight on this one. And because I'm not eight, eight feet, eight inches, um, and I'll have, I'm not going to make this a standard change. I'm just going to change this one roof here. And I'll explain why in a minute. The other thing I want to look at here is there's nothing really here. It does tell me my U value and my R value. That is for insulation purposes. Um, I'll tell you right now that right now this is way below what it needs to be. You have to have an R48 in a roof now. That's two feet of styrofoam or two feet of pink fiberglass insulation. That's a lot of insulation. Um, part of the reason why these are set at one foot is to get that insulation value in there for you. But I want you to see that you can change it. So when I change that, what happens is my fascia gets shallower. It's not as thick. Okay. So most of your homes that you have, you probably have a six or an eight inch fascia on your house right now. And that's a little more common to see. The other thing I can change when I select this roof is over here on the side. So as I go down through my sides, I've got um, my fascia depth is set to 10 inches. Okay, so you can change that here and you can go to a different setting. I'm going to go six, for example, and apply that. Oops, I've got to put in the dang double. Sorry, this program gets so mad at me. Wrong. And that just shortens that up. Now the face is where your gutter goes. So if you want to put a gutter on, a gutter is four inches deep. So if you only have a six inch fascia, you're not going to see a lot of that trim work. Um, so you can play around and get the style here that you feel works for your house. That's one of the easiest ways to change the way a house looks is change the fascia board. 
Um, we also have a slope on here. Right now, all of this, every roof on here defaults to a 9 and 12 slope. That's just under a 70 degree angle. That's a pretty steep angle there, um, which is fine, but it may make your house feel like a mushroom. Big top, little bottom, okay? Which is good for Smurfs, but not for people, okay? So what you want to do is uh, you can change this. And let's talk about this slope. This is really important that you need to put in your head and remember. If you're using asphalt shingles, the lowest this first number can be is three. You cannot have a roof that's less than three and 12 with shingles. If you go less than three, you have to either use clay tile, slate stone, or built up gravel and rubber membrane all of which are very heavy, very heavy. So we like the asphalt shingles. They have a good long lifespan. They're not gonna fall and crack. I mean, clay tile, a cat runs across your roof, you might lose 70 of them. And you've seen those in the movies, you pull one, they all fall down. That is exactly how they are. Um, so the bottom key one is important. If that breaks, you lose the entire thing. Uh, slate is literally rock. It's square chunks of rock and it's very very heavy so you can change this i typically start all of my designs with five and twelve i just start there um, the average in utah is, is right at five we vary between four and six we need a good slope to get snow off our roofs but you want to be able to get up on that roof to do repair because in utah we fix our own roofs as a general rule we tend to not hire a lot of people to roof our homes if they get above seven and 12, you almost have to hire someone to do it so they can have the right equipment to tie themselves off so they don't fall uh, because they get pretty steep, steep and hard to work on. So once I change this to five and I hit apply, my roof just dropped. It drops that ridge line, okay? So if you'll take your arms, this will get you a little moving here, elbows up, fill go, and bring your fingers together, that is your roof. Here's your picture of your roof. Now, if you bring your elbows together, that pitch is going to go up. That's the steeper the root, roof, the higher your ridge line. If you bring the ridge slope down, it's going to be lower your ridge line. You have to play with that to get the look that you want. And, and it's just a good visual. It also makes you feel like you're getting some blood moving because the posterior part of your body is sitting now, and that's not good. I now need to fix the back of my roof where it slopes in. To do that is edit the footprint, just like your floors, which we edit the boundary, um, or the walls, we edit the profile. With roofs, we edit the footprint. So I click on that, and I got all these pink lines. For me, it's easier to do this in 2D, but you can edit in 3D with a roof very easily. I just need this back line right here, which is where up against the wall, and I just hit the check mark that says define slope, and remove that check mark. And then when I check that off, now the roof runs up to the wall. So now I've got a roof that's not going to leak. However, there is literally nowhere I can put a window along this wall. There's just no room for them. The roof's too tall. So I look at that and I say, well, what if I drop this down? And your pitch, the 5, 12, is that? What that is, is horizontally is the 12. The first number, the five in this case, is the vertical. So you're doing, tri you're doing trig, but we're doing it graphically. You can put in fractions of an inch. So I could put in 3.25 inches. And now I've got a little more room I can put some windows in. Okay. So it's just that you just look at it. If I go to this view, it's a little easier to see what I've done there. And if I change that pitch back to five, you'll see the difference on that. Hit apply. How much higher that roof is. And all I've done is taking an inch and a half off the thing and to make that difference. So take the time to, you know, explore a little bit, make changes, find out what you like. The other thing I want is hips are great. In fact, I like hips on here. I'm going to do a mixed roof on this back side because the hips going to help me here because I got to get a roof over this area. Okay, which is great. I might just go ahead and convert this into this. And I'll show you how to do that. But I'm going to take the slope off of this front piece here as well. Add the footprint, find the line, 
and I'm going to remove the slope there. Now I have a gable. Okay, simple, simple fix. Gables and hips, just and not everything's a combination of these. Everything's a combination of hips and gables. That's it's kind of like your highest level math calculus is still adding and subtracting. That's the only things you really can do in math. You can only add, you can only subtract. Multiplication is shortcut addition. Division, shortcut subtraction. And that's all math is. And if you keep that in your mind, you can get through your math classes. That's all you're ever doing. Okay, now, I've got a problem here though, and it's a pretty big problem. Um, one, my roof is floating a little bit up above. And um, if I look at my wall height, my walls are at uh, my second level, which is nine feet but they don't go that high. Well, this one didn't. That's kind of weird. Um, not sure why. And um, I, so my roof's up here, my wall's here, and this wall is down here below, but I've got this opening. Now, on a brick or a stone wall, I don't want that brick to go up into the eave here, okay? You'll see it done, but it makes the cost of that wall like twice because every brick along the profile of the roof has to be cut and most likely that's just to be thrown away and i'd rather not spend my money on labor that doesn't get me anywhere okay and i also have all this underside going on here except not on this side i gotta figure out what the difference is with these walls oh i know what it is <laughs> See what it is? I've dropped this one down to foundation. So if you're done with your floor framing, you can drop your walls down. Let me show you how to do that one. Had it. So you take your wall and you take your base constraint and change that to foundation and you apply that. That will drop that down. So now that wall sits on the top of your foundation where it's supposed to. The reason we left them up so you could see if your framing was going crooked. And for some of you found that that's kind of makes it a little nicer. My problem here is for some reason, this wall is not the right height. And I'm not sure why that is doing that. I'm gonna try and figure that out, but I probably won't. Level, don't have any offsets. So not sure what's going on there. It's a little odd, this one's down. And I'm not sure what happened there. Regardless, it's not a big deal. It's probably me. All right, so here's how you're going to cap off your walls that are brick and stone, especially where you have a gable. Okay, so pay kind of attention to this one. Uh, and then going back to my first floor, the wall I'm going to fix is right here. This side over here is a hip, it's not a big issue, but this one is. So I'm going to do a new wall, and I'm going to draw the wall here. I'm actually going to go to the second floor to do it. So this is part of the reason why I switched things the way I did. So I need a wall right across this whole area. So I'm going to go to architecture and wall. I'm going to go with a wood stud with siding, or you can do the wood stud with shingle. I'm going to do the wood stud with shingle because I did siding last time. So shingles in this case are cedar shake shingles. They're wood, they're decorative, they're California's favorite shingle. Um, make sure you know that you want to use these. This is dry wood that's put on the top of a house. And here's what happens in California every year they get the Santa Ana winds. And you hear about it in the news all the time. Their roofs start on fire. You've got dry pine on top of your roof where ash is flowing. That pine, especially cedar, is full of oil. The pine sap oil is what makes them water resistant. It also makes them extremely flammable. Anybody ever on a camping trip burned um, pine sap? Oh my gosh, don't you guys do anything? Uh, next time you're up in the woods, you get some sap, throw it in the fire and see what happens to it. That is, it's like throwing gasoline on the fire. It's turpentine and it ignites really, really well. So what makes it work for a shingle makes it burn the house down in four minutes flat. It's kind of crazy. 
So I'm gonna go with the, the shingles on stud here. That is a two by six wall. I'm just gonna trace the back on my um, fish face interior. I'm gonna let it go up 20 feet because I really don't care. So this is gonna bring that wall right along here. It will not be as thick as my brick wall because it doesn't have brick. I'm also gonna make sure this wall goes from one side to the other. Now, in reality, I probably would wanna wrap the sides, but where it's a hip on the side here, it's not that crucial. So back to the 3D so you can see what that looks like. That is a cedar shake shingle. You can use these on your shingles. I mean, it's the same symbol, uh, but I'll do that in just a moment. So I'm up here in the top area here. I need to bring that down. And typically what I want to do is I'm just going to do a base offset here. And I'm going to measure that, I guess. Um, I should measure it. I can't measure in 3D. And so I'm going to go to my elevations. The elevation I use is the north side because I can see clearly what I want to do here. I'm just going to do a quick measure from there to there. And it's going to be one foot, one and eight. They should have known that. So this offset for my base is a minus one foot one. Whoa, oh, 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 so sorry. Computer's yelling at me. A minus one foot, 1.125 inches. And drop that down so that sits on the brick where it should. And it's also doing a little weird number right here on the corner, which is fine. Once I get that position, I'm going to go back to 3D so you can see what I'm doing there. I've got a wall that's sticking through my roof, which is kind of like a weird parapet, which is really what this is. So in the Old West movies, let me watch Old West movies, Spaghetti Westerns, The Duke, Man Called Trinity. Another, oh. Okay, so in Old West movies, every building has a parapet to make it look taller than what it really is. Um, when the West was built, that was a pretty common architectural style was to build the entire height of the building as if it was going to be complete and then add a floor as you could afford it. So it may be a three-story front, but only a one-story interior. And then they'd add stories as they would ever get wood, especially here in the West where we don't have the lumber like they do in the East Coast. We would put up these parapets. And they kind of use them in Westerns for gun, gun shoots and all that stuff. Okay, here's how the quick fix is on this. And that's pretty quick. If I select the wall, then I get a new set of windows up here. I can change the profile, that's easy. But I also get this attached top base. Um, if you do the attached top bottom here, it pulls the bottom up. I wanna pull the top down. So that's the difference between these two. This pulls the bottom up, this pulls the top down. So I click on this guy and then I select the roof and it trims it automatically for me. So it makes it really, really quick and easy to fix those gabled ends. Really quick and easy to fix those. Okay. So don't, don't get too hung up on things not being what they want. And I probably would um, carry these all around. Here's the other thing. Because I'm coming around the corner, I don't have, I, I should have siding here. I should just do the same wall. But you can just do the wall, attach top base, select the roof and it will pull it up as well and close that off. So don't get hung up on all the nitty gritty stuff. Just go ahead and make your adjustments. And it looks like I missed a foundation wall. I need to drop my skirts down. So all these walls need to drop uh, one and foot one and eight. And I'll just know that. Measure it in your elevation and drop that down so it sits on the foundation. Okay, moving along here, because we got, um, a lot going on. So that roof looks really, really good. I'm happy with it. The one thing I'm not happy with is that it um, kind of goes into my wall. And you want to kind of take a minute and look uh, from the top view, if you can, where that wall is at. So I went from the inside of the wall. I actually need to pull that forward, so the, uh, that footprint. And I'm just going to take and drag that forward. It's going to go up to behind this um, siding. So I just, not the full way, you can use the align tool. I've done these enough, I just drag it now. And that way um, it's not gonna be in the wall and cause some issues. 
Okay, now I've got this section over here. And again, I'm just trying to give you guys techniques. So I do like how this slopes down, but I need this part to slope forward as it gets to this corner. And so I, what I want to do is just extend the roof that I have for here. So I'm going to go back to my first floor. And I get here, and lo and behold, there's not a roof. Well, happy day. Go to the second floor. I find the roof. There's the roof. And I can see where my second wall, needs, my wall below is. If you don't remember how to do that, you come over to your underlay. If I can find that. Right here, your underlay, make it sure you show your first floor in your second floor so you can see the walls. Okay, I'm going to select my roof, edit the footprint, and well, that's good. I'm just going to add another wall. So I do my wall pick, select the wall below. Well, that's cool. And I might as well just, well, I'm just going to draw a line there because I'm going to do something different here. And I'm just going to grab somewhere in there close. Sort of, kind of. I'm not worried about too much. It's got a slope on it. Cool. It's a 9-12 slope. This is a 9-12 slope. This will be fun. Corner that out. Connect this to the other line. So I just extended it. So this is all one <laughs> roof that looks like a gun. Woohoo. Don't call the press. That's going to I'm going to check that off. So you got some issues. So let's go find out what my issues are. It says it can't make the footprint. Okay, so I don't want to delete this. I'm going to say cancel. And the, what do you think my problem is? Why I can't make the footprint? I kind of told you. This guy's at a nine. I just jacked this corner into outer space because this guy here is at a three and a half. I'm told to go nine. It's going. Oh, it's like. It's like uh, what would it be the example like? That's like taking your shoes and pulling them up to your knees. Okay, there's other examples, but they're not school appropriate. Okay, so I'm just going to drop this down to match the rest of it, 3.5 here. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one. It's also 9. Remember, 9 is your default. So you do have to go through and check these and not do double entries. It's always bad. And I'll check again to see if we can create that. Nope. So the ununion them. Nope. So it's having a problem with this roof, a big problem. So I've checked those two slopes. This one does a slope. This one does. Um, I let's try. Let's see, this was a hip here. Let's take. And you start playing, and you don't have to do this. This is as you're trying to work, take a slope off. Try that, see if that works. So by taking the slope off this end, it fixes that roof. And now it slopes appropriately. So that's all good. Now i got to fix this along here. Now the reason it wouldn't do this one is there's not enough distance in here to turn the corner. Okay, You have to be past the corner of the wall to do um, a corner hip. OK, now my problem is this guy is what kind of roof do I want along here? Again, the same thing. I don't want snow against the wall. So what would be your suggestion? What kind of roof? What would you guys do? Again, this one goes out over the front porch. So I've got a lot of things to consider here. Do you want to do a, well, let's see. I did a gable over here. So I do a gable on the back end and a hip on the front. Does that work? OK. So I'm going to go back to the second floor again so I can see everything involved. Could I attach it to this same roof? That would be my suggestion. If you're doing a roof on the same level, keep building. Go in sequences like this so that if it goes wrong, you can fix it without fixing the whole thing. Um, and I'll show you what can go wrong here in just a minute on the second floor. But I'm just going to quickly edit this footprint. I'm going to go back into my wall tool because I have walls that I can just click on. Um, out here, I don't have a wall here for the porch, but I do have the wall of the second floor. I'm going to cheat and use it because cheating's cool. 
So let's throw that. Now, these are all 912s again, okay? And then take and clean it up real quick with my corner tool, here to here. This is gonna be a little different. This line's gonna come down this way, and I'm gonna turn it around the corner here so this just wraps right around there. Okay, now I'm gonna fix my problem, children. This one is no slope, that's one easy fix. This one matches the slope of the rest of the house. So I'm gonna put that in, not that, that's bad, that, good. Check this guy, change that one. And then change this one as well. Again, if you don't, you then get an error message that says it can't build the roof. And I said, check that off. So let me say, now notice, here's my valley, here's my hips, and there's another weird ridge line going here. This is actually a hip that comes up to the side of the house. Okay, so what that looks like on the 3D is like that, okay? So again, you wanna make sure, look at it, make sure snow and water are moving away from the house, that you have those slopes in there to make that work. And this one I could change into a gable. I'm not gonna take the time to do that because you guys are getting bored watching me do all this, but I kind of have to, but then I got this front thing that's just kind of weird. And I don't know what I'm gonna do that. I'll have to figure that one out. That's probably should have been a gable, or a, sorry, hip. Okay, that's my main floor. I'll work on this. You guys got the tools to do that. Can you open the door for him again? You tell him to leave that open when he goes. Just remember to prop that open when you go, because you go at the same time every day. I'll take the flag off. I didn't hear you, sir. He said to open before he goes. Okay. All right, now, what we're going to look at here is the second floor roof. And I'm just going to go this as quickly as I can, because I know you guys need time to work, and more time than you realize. Um, I do have this garage and I want to show you the garage and then the upper stairs and this does need fixed. Um, on my second floor here real quick with the garage, I popped this part out intentionally because it has a tendency that you don't think about it. And my big problem is going to be this area right here. So if I put my roof on there really fast and I still got my overhangs, got my defined, if you come down, um, you start your roof line, and you start picking on these overhangs. And as soon as it starts with one, you can go in and change your settings so you don't have to change them all. And then you can just play, oh my gosh, you didn't do that really. Never mind what I just said, forget I said anything that lied. Uh, I'm just gonna go through and change this all in a minute. So they come around and then come and theoretically tie back into this one. I need it to come up around this house part here. Again, you can trace everything. When you do a line that's not me sloped, don't put the slope on it. I'm just gonna come right in here and start back here and trace the perimeter of my stud for that wall. And I'm off a little bit, but it's okay. It'll be something I can fix a little later. So I pull this all around, up and around the corner here. And for some reason, they all got slopes. Yay. So, yay team. Uh, quick fixes on the corners, because I don't want to fix them when I have to. You can, in this mode, come in and window those. And you can, in this case, I'm taking them all off. So they just going to turn them all off. You can window and do more than one thing at once. You can also hold your control key down like I'm gonna do here, and select each of these. And so you can get them all selected at once. And then you can change all of those at the same time. And then I'm gonna put that in place. And that looks like a pretty decent roof, you know? Yay, well, okay. It looks great, feels great, except over here. Everything is gonna slope right down to the wall here. And while I like everything on this side, and I'm happy with that, this is my problem. Um, and here's the what you're gonna wanna fix. And ultimately the reality of this, my friends, 
is that um, if I take this slope off, there is not a fix to fix the roof for here. You've got to change the walls. There's not a good fix. And this is what you end up with is that. That is not an acceptable roof design, okay? One, it's a great ski ramp, but it is, is not a decent. In fact, it's so poorly off, it cuts into my window. You don't want your roof in your window. You need at least, your windows need to be about six inches above your roof. So kind of watch for that. That means when you're putting these on, you may be changing windows. You may be changing wall locations. Ultimately, this is not a solution for this. I need to change the walls in this area. Um, it's a, it comes back to the layout design. And if I look at my second floor, it's a crappy open design. It doesn't really function well. So when you get to the roof stage, it may force you to rethink what you're doing. Do not be afraid to delete things. Okay, let that be okay. It's okay to delete. But this is, while it's a solution, it is not a reasonable solution because it looks weird. It's like a big stubbed toe. It's just, just not. So think about where your walls are at, okay? One last thing that's on the second floor. If I just do, and I just don't care, okay? And I know there's like six of you that don't care and I'm okay with that. And you do your roof, not a floor, dang it. I keep doing that. I wish they weren't together. Do your roof. You can really come in here and just turn the slope on and just pick all the walls on your floor, go around the whole thing and not really care a whole lot about what's happening. And while this will work, it'll still get you your grade. It's viable. I'm gonna leave it at nine and 12 because I wanna talk a little bit about that. I check that off. Um, you might get, I can't make it. Okay, there's a couple reasons why it can't. The big one is right here. I can't slope up both ways and that way and make it work mathematically. And the mathematics behind this are three-dimensional trig. Those who go into engineering architecture will take one class. It's called statics. It's basically three-dimensional trig where you may have a situation where you have as many as 23 unknown variables. Don't panic. You will always be able to solve for one and then substitute that in for the next and you just work your way through it. Um, it's, a, it's a fun class because your tests are only two problems, but they'll take you six hours, but that's okay. Um, it's just part of the pain of making a career. The fix for this is pretty simple, okay? Um, really the fix is going to be this. I'm going to go in, um, continue. I'm going to take my corner tool and I'm not going to try and do this. I'm just going to cut it across and take these two lines out. We're still at nine and 12. If I change the slope, I've probably been okay. But I left at nine and 12 to see the error. I can check that off. Still got an issue. How joyful. So, oh, there's my issue there. If I look, there's my other issue. So I'm going to go and fix that real quick. We've got some corner turns. Look for these open arrows if they have them. Fix them out. That should do it. And then check that off. Uh, yes. And I'm going to go 3D real quick. Um, I need to move that up. So that roof goes to the roof line. It's a, now, this is what I'm talking about, that 9 and 12. This looks like some out of monster house. Okay, this thing is just huge. It's like a big old witch's hat. It's, it's monumental, but it's overkill. This roof is gonna cost as much as a second floor. So you can go in and once you got the whole thing, you can drop that down. I'm just gonna drop it down to six, not a whole lot, three inches. And when I do that, that puts it more into proportion. So you want to think about how things stack as you work it. But that's basically doing roofs and um, try and get as much done. So uh, what we're going to do next time is the roof framing. Kind of like the floor framing, but a little bit more precarious because we've got things going lots of directions. Okay. All right. The rest of the time is yours to work. 
Um, hopefully that works for you there, Griffin. And uh, you can take care of what you need to do. And I'll post this. There's the lecture from yesterday. It's slightly different. Um, what I did yesterday with the house, I did yours a little bit differently today. Uh, so between the two, I think I've covered every condition you guys will have. And um, we'll go with that. So let me stop the recording here.